All right. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of One Million Cups. My name is Nicholas Stamper, and I'll be hosting today's presentation. First, I'm going to talk for a few minutes about One Million Cups, Chico, its mission, and then the second thing will be, will be the actual six-minute presentation given to us by our special guest. And then the third we will cover is a Q&A from our audience, and then shortly after that, we'll wrap up. One Million Cups was created by the Kauffman Foundation. The purpose of this foundation works alongside educators, researchers, and other partners to better understand and improve the environment in which entrepreneurs start and grow businesses. One Million Cups is a free weekly program to educate, engage, and connect local entrepreneurs. It's an environment where you get to be able, able to have different conversations with different entrepreneurs. The overall mission behind One Million Cups is to, again, not only lower the barrier of access to education and resources for all entrepreneurs, but to be surrounded by a community and environment that helps you build ideas and get feedback for your business. In the beginning, One Million Cups started off small in Kansas City, and now it's grown 131 communities. Moving forward at each location, there are presentations each week. Today, our presenter is Danielle Hilson with Emergitech. She's going to have six minutes to present and then 15 to 20 minutes of Q&A. If you wanna know more about One Million Cups or how to present here, feel free to join our amazing community online or visit our platform with the, visiting the link on the page. And from here, I'm gonna hand it off to Danielle. Awesome, thank you. Absolutely. Let me go ahead and get my stuff up. Okay, let me screen share here. This might just take a quick second. I'm going to be doing this through Canva. So. Might take a sec to pop up here. No worries. OK. Can we see my screen? Yes, perfectly. Okay. Yes, thank you. You never know with these things, you know? Uh, let me go ahead and minimize you guys here because I've got you kind of blocking my screen. Okay. Um, so about us, I just wanted to quickly um, give you some context as to our business and just kind of an overall uh, what we provide and what we do and kind of what our key differentiator is in the community. Um, and then there are some, obviously, some barriers and some feedback that we're just looking for um, in general. So um, we are a generational firefighter family. Um, we have experienced CPR training um, personally for over 25 years between my husband and I. Um, and my husband is a firefighter medic. Um, I was trained as an EMT. Um, and so we've had to renew our certifications for CPR um, over the course of, you know, every two years over, over 25 years. So um, the overall process for getting your certification in CPR, depending on the level, is extremely archaic and inefficient. Um, it's also really inconvenient, and it's not really set up for uh, people with erratic schedules like doctors, nurses, first responders, stuff like that. Um, and so we personally experienced having that advanced training, um, and the availability of it just wasn't there. Um, really what got us going is my husband got off duty. Um, because he's a fire medic, there's advanced training that he has to have to keep his paramedic license. Um, he was getting off duty in the morning and was down near closer to the Bay Area and was looking for somewhere to get his certification done. And there's just nowhere. And so he found a company that features a specific technology. He was able to just sign up right there, uh, do an online kind of portion um, and then go directly to the site. There was nobody on site. He just used a door code to get in and he took the training and he left and he got his card immediately. Um, he came back going, okay, I don't know what that was, but that was super easy and efficient. So we started looking into it and that's kind of how we got going on, on our business model. And so we wanted to bring not only that same innovation and technology to our community, um, but we also wanted to make the end-to-end -end process just better and more modernized um, through technology and innovation because it's just really archaic. I'll move to my next slide here. There we go, I have to click. All right, so there's just a really quick context. There's two different types of, of CPR training levels. There's a more community level and there's variations within that community level, but that's essentially for babysitters, construction workers, personal trainer, 
Um, anybody that works, you know, in manufacturing that has to have OSHA required CPR, um, anybody in the community that wants to learn CPR, AED and first aid training, um, that's the community level. Then there's the professional level, which is more for nurses, doctors, first responders, like EMTs and paramedics, other hospital staff, um, and assisted care and skilled nursing facilities. So those are the different types of training. Um, there are several organizations that, that provide this training. Um, there's Red Cross, there's American Heart Association. Um, American Heart Association is actually really one of the most recognized companies um, and organizations in CPR training. And on top of that, that's what most companies, businesses require their employees and their staff to have is either AHA or the American Red Cross. Um, so the current state of, of what CPR training is, particularly in our community, but in most rural communities and in most communities overall across the nation, um, the courses just aren't offered very often. So when you're talking about community level CPR, or if you're talking about professional level, um, they're just not out there very often. So you might get the training two to four times a month. Um, but if you're needing that certification immediately, because you can't be put on the schedule until you get it done, um, that really doesn't work. Um, so they're not only are they limited to how often they're offered, um, but they are restricted by student instructor ratios. So the AHA requires that if you're going to have in-person instructor-led um, courses, that you need to have at least three students to one mannequin, a minimum of three students in the class. So oftentimes what happens is, <clears throat> excuse me, people will sign up for a CPR class and they're waiting, it's coming up next week, and they get a phone call 48 hours ahead that's like, we've canceled the class because there weren't enough people registered. So that person is now kind of hanging uh, because they have to get their cert and they now just got dropped from the class. And the next one isn't for the next two weeks. So that is a pretty common occurrence. Um, courses are also usually during business hours. The courses that are offered are not only in person, they're you know three to four hours in person on a Tuesday at 9 a.m. or noon. So it does impact businesses because they're having to have that person step away so that they can get trained. Um, it's not conducive to, to typical business hours. Uh, In-person instructor-led, um, there's nothing wrong with that. We provide that level of training as well, but it requires three to four hours minimum and then up to eight hours for the higher level training in person. So you have to be able to carve out that amount of time in your day to focus on that. Um, it's also slightly subjective in the sense that the instructor is watching you. And while the instructors, you know, I'm an instructor, so is my husband, while the instructors are trained on what to look for in order to try to be as objective as possible, that's not always easy to do. So, excuse me, oftentimes um, the results that you're getting are very subjective. Um, so, you know, you're kind of looking at ventilations and you're like, I mean, yeah, the, you know, the chest rose a little bit. Um, in 2019, the American Heart Association did start requiring feedback devices on all mannequins for compressions. So while that is helpful because it's an actual feedback device, it shows you how deep you're going. If you're recoiling all the way, which is coming all the way back up, if you're doing it in the right cadence, hundred to 120 beats per minute, um, those are very helpful. Um, and those have improved, but those aren't without issue. Um, they definitely have their issues where sometimes they're not working. They're not working the entire time throughout um, throughout the, the session. So that is often a, an issue as well. Um, and then blended learning op options. So the AAJ started moving to blended learning, which essentially just means you can do part of your training online. The other part of your training needs to be in-person skills. Um, oftentimes in the companies that are in our vicinity, in our area, um, how their system works is you go online and you're like, okay, I want to take this level of CPR. They're like, great, go over there to the American Heart Association, buy the course over there, take the course, come back over here, buy our skill session, and then email us your certificate. And then we'll verify it. And then you can come in for three hours or two hours and get trained. That's pretty much the standard of, of CPR. So it's really not very flexible. This system has been around for a very long time. Blended learning is new, um, but traditional classroom style in person has been around for quite a bit. Um, 
And so when we, when we kind of came up with this, you know, business plan and what we we're going to do here, sorry, <clears throat> I have a tickle in my throat. So if I don't drink water, it's going to, I'm going to start hacking everybody. Um, we, I have a background in marketing. Obviously my husband's been doing this for a really long time. So he's got not only the technology side of things, but also, uh, the care level side of things. Um, so we wanted to streamline the registration process and modernize it as well as redefine the standard by pushing brand um, consistency and leveraging the technology and the innovation. Um, we really wanted to address the pain points of that you know, current state and the, the need state there um, by offering multiple daily courses for all levels, which is what we do. Um, we wanted to bring innovation um, through either virtual training or self-directed voice-assisted mannequin. That's what a VAM is training. Um, we wanted to offer it six days a week until 6 p.m. So to have some kind of flexibility there for people that have erratic schedules. Um, and then really offering those self-guided or virtual options, which means we as instructors don't have to be in the room with the person. This also allows the flexibility because if we do virtual training for community level CPR, um, if we do that, then we don't have to have that minimum of three people. So we can have one to two people. So if somebody is like, I expired on my CPR first aid, I work for the union, I need to have this tomorrow or it's going to be bad. We are one of the only places, well, we are the only place within about 70 miles where you can literally register, take the online portion, take your skills portion and immediately get your card in the same day. Um, we also have a seamless registration and checkout process. So all you do, it's a one-stop shop. Go to our site, you click register, you immediately get your link, um, regardless of if it's community level or the higher level of training. Um, you get your link, you start the online portion, and then you come in for skills and your card is, is given to you very quickly. Um, so I'm going to talk about the technology really quick, because this is kind of what we based our entire business model around initially. This is the innovation. It's called RQI One Stop. It's that machine over to the right and the image on the right. It's really the gold standard um, uh, for ECC training, um, which is emergency cardiovascular care training um, and the future of training. Um, the American Heart Association uh, got in partnership with Lairdall. Both of those are global le leading companies in CPR equipment and training and educational material. Um, they essentially produced uh, RQI partners and Lairdall built this station. And so you think of the station as it's really just an RQI one stop. It's really a one stop station. So this station specifically is for higher levels of training. It's for BLS, ACLS, and PALS. Those three levels of training are for doctors, nurses, paramedics, people, you know, within the healthcare setting or first responder setting. Um, this exact technology is being used by Enlo currently to train its staff. It's also being used by hospitals and nursing and allied health programs nationwide and globally. So this is where everything is heading. The AHA has put a lot of money behind this. RQI is, is out there. The part that they haven't done a lot behind is commercial. So really there are only a few commercial entities within this area, um, the closest being the Bay Area. And then there's a larger one over on the East Coast. Um, there's only about 15 commercial entities nationwide that offer this technology. Um, so I wanted to kind of talk about that a little bit just because that's kind of a larger part of our business. Um, if you look on LinkedIn, there's, you know, we know that there's over 350,000 cardiac arrests, um, every year in the U S and there's only a 10% survival rate. Um, after one RQI, so that's that station on the right after one RQI training providers improve their CPR skills by 81% for compressions and 273% for ventilations. So just doing one session on this um, increases your quality of your CPR skills, which of course in turn leads to higher patient outcome. So that increases that 10% survival rate. Um, so not only is it the future of training, but we, like I said, it's the only one that's offered within 70 miles. The Bay Area is the closest one. So 
our mission was sort of to take this and other innovation and technology and bring it to rural communities, especially in Northern California, because rural communities are not as likely to get that level of technology. Um, and so we actually, on top of that, I'll move over here to our current barriers. Right there, I just wanted to point out that image right there. We decided that um, we were going to take the concept of RQI and do something similar for that virtual training. So this is our virtual station. It has all the materials and equipment that you need to learn CPR, AED, and first aid on a child, a, adult, child, and infant. Uh, there's webcam set up. So we come through virtually and we assess your skills virtually with feedback devices, um, observation, and then testing knowledge throughout. Uh, these are our current barriers. So we are just, while we don't want to be, you know, Joe's CPR shop, and that was really big, um, and why we have such a consistent brand across channels, um, including our website, and it, and it definitely looks more modern. It's got all those features, uh, but we are at the end of the day, a small family owned business. Um, any of the financial, you know, aspects that we've put into this business have been either loans that we've taken out or our own funding. And so we, because it's really just my husband and I operating this and I've got two kids, you know, um, that's full time. So really trying to understand what resources are out in our community, um, really looking at partnerships, trying to understand if partnerships are available. Um, you know, we have a system where we can, we have a mobile um, version of that station. And so we can coordinate with primary care physicians and drop it off and leave it there. And they essentially, it's self-guided instruction because it's a voice assisted mannequin. So all they do is log into the station and they can go with it. Um, so we're kind of trying to feel out partnerships. Um, the biggest, I would say, barrier though is educational. This system of CPR training has been the same for decades. And uh, there's there's that trust. We, I can't tell you how many people are like, are you legit? Are you a legit company? Because there's those online companies that are kind of scammy. Um, and I've repeatedly had to say, no, really, this is through the American Heart Association. I promise you it's legit. Um, the card that you get at the end is the same card you would get if you sat in your classroom for four hours. So um, really educating the community. Um, once people come in, they try it. They love it. They're like, this is great. Even if it's a challenge because it's such an objective technology, you can't cheat. Um, we still have that, that educational to the community. So we're sort of missing that. And then trust and brand awareness. So really, because it is just the two of us trying to do the marketing, the sales, all the things um, is a barrier because that's, that's very time constraining. So ultimately we have a good presence on social website and, and paid ads, um, but we want to one, make sure that our brand resonates with people and to just think through ideas or ways that we could better educate the community. Um, I have put out press releases. Um, I'm hoping and waiting that they pick pick us up as a story, um, but really just looking for feedback on that. So yeah, that's pretty much what I have and I left it for open discussion. And that is kind of our office. So the office that we have, um, when you walk in, you think you're walking into like a therapist's office. It does not look like a CPR training um place it's it's very modern and clean and small and it's just you so it's very it's a very unique thing and i think that throws people off sometimes in the sense that they're just not used to it this is very 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 new lovely well let's give danielle a hand thank you amazing amazing presentation so is there um, the same type of service? You said 70 miles that goes down to Sacramento. Is there something in Sacramento? Yep. There's a little bit of a present Sacramento, uh, Sacramento, Roseville, that area. There's a couple of them spattered out. I will add though, that um, the other company there that does this in the Bay, they're the ones who've kind of spread to like Sacramento and um, Roseville area. Um, they're, 
I think the key differentiator with us is not only the technology and the innovation, and they only offer the RQI one stop, not the virtual training station. That's mm-hmm. something that we came up with okay. separately, but they also don't have kind of that modern office look where it's welcoming, it's warming, it's very brand consistent. It's, it's just sort of like you kind of like when my husband took it, he took it in Woodland and he's like, it was this random office and you just kind of walk in and it's, it's sterile. It's not inviting. It's just kind of like, what is going on here? Um, so yeah, I think that there's definitely in Sacramento, they do have that, but it's, uh, a little bit different as well. So. So you also mentioned that Enlo, you Enlo was using your services. No, Enlo is using that RQI one stop. So that okay. station RQI initiate initially started the commercial side of RQI is fairly new. How they started was by implementing this technology in nursing programs, allied health programs, mm-hmm. um, as well as hospital programs. So hospitals around the country are bringing this in only for their staff. They're not offering it out to the general public. They are just doing it to train their staff and get their staff up to speed on quality CPR skills. So we're starting to see a lot of those results coming in um, where you're seeing uh, higher um, patient outcomes and survival rates because of their the way they do it in the hospital because they have a hospital program that's a little different. It's the same station physically, but it's a different program. Mm-hmm. They're doing quarterly training. So every quarter they're training. Ours is offered to the general public as part of their licensure, which is a two year, every two year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Would this be something that could be used in nursing schools, even like View College, Chico State? I mean, so I have have, all the things, you know. They do not have that. They have a SIM center that Chico State uses for their nursing program. The SIM center does not have this. Um, They have their own simulation stuff but it doesn't, it doesn't have this. It's not what the RQI system is. I don't know that they would ever pull that in. Um, I know that they're trying, RQI is trying to get it out to as many colleges, you know, programs as yeah. possible. I've actually reached out to them and, and just sort of, you know, as a, as a program, just kind of like we can, we can fund because how it works is you prepay for the licenses. So we've already paid for a basic life support, advanced life support license, and it doesn't behoove them to pay for that license. It doesn't make sense for them to pay for that license. So I have reached out, like we can get a station, purchase the station ourselves. It's funded by us. We can put it at your SIM center or your location on campus and we can leave it. So I've given as much information as possible. I've emailed, I've talked on the phone to a few people. I have personal connections at Chico State in the kinesiology department. I think, again, that it's this brand awareness trust. They're kind of like, I don't really know. I've linked it to LinkedIn, you know, um, articles that talks about this program. And I have stalked people on LinkedIn that are, that are part of Chico State and Butte College nursing programs. And I have... I have done and reached out um, without physically going on campus, which even has a little bit of a hesitation because they'll only let certain people on campus for certain things. Sure. Um, I've We've actually met with the fire academy at Butte because firefighters as well, although they are changing that to where they now are requiring them to go through the EMT program before they mm-hmm. come into the fire program. So we have reached out to the EMT program as well um, the, the nursing program. Yeah. So I've reached out, but it's just sort of sitting there. (laughs) So I feel like it is a trust thing. I feel like people are like, I don't know, this doesn't seem real. This isn't, I mean, I can't tell you how many people are like, is this legit? Are you legit when they call, you know? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause I mean, it just feels like you need to personally get in front of them, not just social media and call, you know what I mean? Yep. Yep. And And whether it's, um, a demo or, And I've totally offered that up. I'm like, Hey, I have a mobile unit. I can, it's like a suitcase. I just roll it on in. I can demo everything for you because I, I definitely agree. I think that if more of these facilities saw it and understood how easy and efficient and effective it is, Mm -hmm. they'd be like, Oh, Oh, you know, um, but trying to even get in to get that demo. Here's the thing. What if you did a 360 and you invited them to you? 
I have thought about that. Mm-hmm. That's what and I would do. Like, I would, yeah. you know, do a, a, I don't know, even a ribbon cutting for your business and then have it, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and I've also, like um, talked with NPH and I was yeah. able to connect oh, yeah. with, mm-hmm, cause it's all healthcare. Mm-hmm. Um, I was able to talk with one of the gals there and she kind of manages like events that they do. And I've said, it'd be really fun to do like a cocktails and compressions event where at a minimum I can eat, it can be open to the community where we're teaching just hands-on CPR or, um, hands-only CPR. So you're not getting a certificate. You're just learning right. CPR, right. but we could have the equipment there. We could, you know, put it out there and then we could partner with NPH as well, um, so there's ideas for that. It's making sure that we have the funding and the resources to do something like that. Um, in which case we would probably have to rely upon them for that, but that's definitely something we've thought about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you said you did a press release. Um, mm-hmm. Have you reached out to a news station personally? I have, um, or even upgrade, I know it sounds odd, but I mean, MPH is an upgraded living quite often. <laughs> I have reached out to upgraded living as well. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I've, I, yeah. I know. So I, uh, the press room, the first press release I did was around CPR awareness week. Mm-hmm. You would think that that would be spot on. Um, apparently they're just kind of understaffed and weren't able to get to it. Um, so I kind of reworded the press release and made it more about the technology and bringing this technology to rural Northern California where, you know, it, it, people just have to travel to try to get this and they don't now it's here, it's available. Um, and I've been working with my personal connections that have connections there at the news and news station. Haven't heard anything. I've reached out, um, to Chico ER as well. Okay. Um, Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so I'll just say one more thing but any kind of conferences that are going on maybe not I mean there's not a ton that go on here right right Sacramento, I mean you said you have that niche over that other company that's you know and that is yep so we kind of yeah so I think that the deal here or is something scaling is is having these stations in multiple locations which of course requires funding which we are we are funding this, um, out of, you know, our, our personal, um, income. And so we're, we're limited there. Um, but yes, I have, I have looked at actually like events that Chico state puts on for either allied health or nursing and just trying to be a part of that as well. Um, I, you know, I have a background in events on marketing in general. And so I was hoping to just kind of get in there, um, but some of them aren't very large and not that it needs to be large, but, um, and some of them don't take like outside vendors. It's all like vendors within right. the state community. Um, so there's a little bit of barriers there. Okay. Um, I see a question. There's questions. Let mm-hmm. me yeah. Okay. First, Kent's been, Kent has a question. And then after that, Emily has one. Okay, great. Kent. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I'm lowering <laughs> my hand here. Okay. Uh, I was a member of CERT when I lived in Chico, and mm-hmm. um, they have training, you know, like the guy who runs Scuba Hut and his uh, significant other would would uh, do training at the Posse mm-hmm. and, uh, or at the Sheriff Calm Reserve building for us, or even over at the Scuba Hut itself. I think we had a training over there. Yeah. But uh, so they might be evangelists uh, to help spread the word because a lot of them work in medical or fire or mm-hmm. whatever business. Yeah. And another, a, a more overarching, overarching group would be like the VOAD group. I don't know if you know about them. No. Mm-mm. Volunteer organizations assisting with disaster. So like during a snowmageddon, when people's roofs were collapsing and stuff, and we had to go deliver food and everything, mm-hmm. uh, we would, we would, I'd, use the VOAD list locally to figure out who's going to get aid and who can do this and who can do that. Right. Based on the needs of the people that we're calling in. And there's a two, one, one number they call in on and say whatever they, they need housing or food or whatever it is. Um, then, uh, so you might look at those VOAD. Yeah. And so, so yeah, so we've gotten, uh, what we're doing is we can do in-person training and we have been, so we actually have, just recently landed the ARC of Butte County. 
So we're yeah. doing all of their 600 employees 20 at a time right. per month. But that is in-person training. And so yeah. our business model, while we're doing it, because we're just trying to do anything to get money in at this point, right. that our business model really um, is, is the higher level of training, is this BLS, ACLS, and PALS, where it's self-directed and self-managed. They use a door code. They come into our office. They log into the laptop. It voice assists them through every portion of it. And they immediately get their card as soon as they're done. It, it appears right there. They hit send and it gets sent to their email. They receive it immediately. So there's a Teams version of that. And then there's an, an independent version of that at our office. Um, that I think is the biggest barrier. Barrier uh, The, the in-person instructor led, we have an Oroville utilities department that we're working with. We have the ARC. So those ones we're picking up because everybody wants CPR. Even yeah. that is still focused on that in-person instructor led. And it's like, we're going to take it because we need the funding, but right. we're trying to educate people that there's a way easier way of doing this to where even if it's blended learning, you do the online portion, it takes you an hour and a half and then we're there an hour and a half for skills and you're done. So it's really trying to push that technology that we still see uh, that barrier yeah. with. All right, cool. Yeah. Perfect. And then Emily asks, have you been able to put together any videos, like a teaser of the system and clips showing how easy the process is? Um, yes and no. I have put together um, something that I had put on Instagram that was just sort of me walking into the business location. Right when you walk into our office, there's a video uh, monitor on the wall that it says start here. You touch it tells you everything that you're going to expect, where to go, what to do, how it's going to work. Um, so it shows me kind of tapping on that video. It shows me going over and logging in. Um, and it shows me like starting compressions or something like that. And then it shows the end point where it's got a card on the screen. So um, unfortunately, because it is just me, it's it's, it's time thing. So any ideas um, on that would be great. A lot of the time my husband is on duty so I am self filming this, uh, which oh, is, yeah. which is fun with compressions. Um, we do have ring cameras in the office, uh, for security reasons. Um, and I have thought about just recording the ring camera of me, like going in and just putting that out there to show and then do a time lapse where it's speeding that process up, um, and going through each module end to end, and then getting the card and showing how quick that process is. Um, so I have thought of things like that. Um, I'm, I was kind of hoping my friend could actually just come with me and video me. Uh, and she did the first one and just to try to help explain it and put that out on social and even promote it on social. Um, yeah. 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 And I think those are all great. And the ring cameras could definitely be good if you don't have someone else there, or maybe just in an expensive stand for your phone. And then you could always, you know, yeah. trim the video on either side. But what might also be cool is if you have someone that, you know, needs the certification, if you actually maybe cover their cost and in return, mm -hmm. you get a video of it, of someone else, like a real life situation. Yeah. So that way it's someone who's never touched the equipment before, who hasn't gone through the process. You could have a testimonial from them and maybe just a brief description of how the experience was, maybe stories of previous experiences and how mm -hmm. terrible that was as a comparison. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, someone who can say, I have my valid card. I've used this at work. So that way there's no risk to that person. It's kind of giving back to someone maybe in an underserved community or someone that's, you know, newer, um, but has still gone through the process previously. And that way, I think that always speaks more if it's a real life person who's not affiliated at all. Right giving back and it's like anyone can do this yes I can show how easy it is but this is someone who's never experienced it yeah yeah no I like that <clears throat> and if it happens to be someone who is part of certain communities or well connected then more so the better because you already are going to tap into their community yeah and we have had I've got a few physician friends and nurse friends that have gone through it and um tested out and they're like this is great and then it's just kind of like word of mouth so um you know, it's from there, it's just, and I even did like a promotional, a promotional thing on social for, um, national nurses day. 
And I gave away oh, okay. two free BLS basic life support at and the cost is $99. Um, that's a cert they have to have to be a nurse. Mm-hmm. And so I put that out there and I had, I had two winners. They were like, Oh, I don't need to renew yet. And I'm like, well, Oh shoot. Be, <laughs> it, I mean, it said on the post, like needs to be used within three months, like not oh. two years. Um, and then they passed, they said, just skip me and go to somebody else. I went to two other people. They said the same thing. I went to a third, I gave it to the third, uh, set of people and they never used it. And I'm like, Oh, bummer. I don't know why you would not use that. It's free. Um, so yeah, they, they didn't end up using it, but, but I still like the idea of the video and the testimonial too. Um, because I do think that resonates. And to Heather's point, I think anyone who you've had go through the process, if you can just get a quote, um, a quick little video snippet, something from them, yep. if you don't have those already. And just those are things that you can recirculate and repost, totally. and tag them if they're part of any organizations, they'd be comfortable yeah, uh, allowing you to tag. I think those are all great if you're still sticking with social media, but it sounds like you're doing a lot of the right things. So don't give right. up hope. <laughs> It, <laughs> it can be really tough, especially in like more technical or anything that, you know, requires these certifications. You yeah. can understand, I'm sure where people are coming from, but totally. you're doing a lot of great things. So just thank you. you know, hang in there. Thanks. Thank you. Perfect. And yeah, Heather's got a couple questions. Yeah. Um, have you gathered testimonials? Um, she also suggests you might want to invest in professional video commercial a good um, video guy he's so great even just like a 30 second promo or something yeah i think i mean i can hear the quote on it i think because we are self-funded we are very very tight on our dollars and where they go um and i know that that is a need and it's just shifting it to priorities and you know um but yeah if you have somebody that i would love to i even like connected with the butte college like film club Oh, be like as a student club, do you yes. want to try to do a video <laughs> for, you know, like the Butte College um, cosmetology will do like haircuts for like way cheaper. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll be your guinea pig. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Well, your uh, hair looks great. Well, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> I got that going. Um, so, yeah, I, if you have somebody, I would love any kind of reference. Okay. That would be great. Um, but yes, I agree the, definitely with the videos because the video is how everybody is um, consuming their information these days. So, yeah, if yes. you have a couple of different versions, you can use that content and cut it up. And, totally. you know, all stuff, you know what Emily was saying. Um, do you are so, I mean, obviously, you guys must have a connection with Steve Standridge, no? Is he. The current Chico Fire mm-hmm. Chief. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of connections with uh, yeah. Chico Fire. Yes. Yeah. Um, my husband worked in Oroville for over, you know, for close 20 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have connections at Cal Fire too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we have reached out to a few of them. Um, again, even with the personal connection, it's kind of like, well, what, what is this? Like, I don't really, there's no instructor. That's weird. So we we're the big thing with that is demoing so it I think the next step for that is actually just physically taking the suitcase down there and going okay I need to set up an appointment with you I need 15 minutes of your time um we actually know the current Chico Fire EMS coordinator and he's a personal friend of ours and we're like this is the thing um a lot of <laughs> yeah, a lot of the fire stations will do it in house, and what we have to do um, is explain to them that while you're doing that in house, because my husband did it in house for Oroville, while you're doing it in house, that takes away from that person's normal duties. It is extremely. It's like managing feral cats, right? Like it's extremely you got to get the certs from everybody and make the copies and follow up. We manage all of that through this system. Um, but it's just educating that that's how it works. So it's just trying to get in and get that time. And I think the next step for that would be setting the appointment because trying to get in front of the chief, um, is definitely mm -hmm, rough. Uh Mm -hmm. And then Enlo, I've actually contacted their, educational department I was kind of concerned with Enlo because we're not really a competitor but like also um and so I I talked to their educational department and I'm like 
actually, we have the same system that you have, but we offer it commercially. And when I told her, she was like, oh, the way that they seem to do it, though, is they have a list of where people say new employees coming in. They have a list of where people can go and they just put us on the list. And I'm like, thanks, but we're literally the only place that you can register, get do the online portion, do the skills and get your card in the same day. So I can't tell you how many people we've had that are like, oh my gosh, I just had one two days ago. Oh my gosh, I'm a nurse and my ACLS is expired and I go back to work on you know Tuesday and I need to have it before then. And I was like, well, you called the right place. Right. Here you go. And yeah, I think it's it just done. gaining traction. And I mean, and, and you know, like they're it's just it slowly word of mouth is going to happen. Yep. Yeah. I think it's when did that. you guys start the business? Well, we technically opened March 20th, but we really didn't start turning business until probably mid-April. Um, of 2023? Uh, of 2023. Oh, okay. You're, yeah. You're, yeah. Yep. We're in the beginning phases of it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I want to make sure that, you know, I think the thing is too, is when you're a two person entity, um, even with my marketing background and, and, and really, you know, I actually worked first year in Nevada for two years. Like oh. I, I ha- in the marketing department doing trade marketing. And so I have, and before that it was like a, a Chicago based consulting firm. Um, so I've definitely have, have tapped yeah. into that. Um, but again, when it's just the two of you and he is a full-time firefighter, um, <laughs> it's, it's really just, you know, so it's trying to put, prioritize each one of those, I think, and, okay. um, which the next step will be. So, but all, I would like to, know, I mean, you're an entrepreneur, both of your husband are entrepreneurs. Um, Chico start, who was the, um, supporting chapter for 1 million cups. Um, we are hosting an entrepreneurial conference next week. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> um, which, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, so it's two days. It's actually at Sierra Nevada brewery in the big room. Oh, great. Oh, yeah. Funny. This is our fourth year. Um, and so connection wise, you never know who you're going to meet. Yeah. It's cool. You don't have to go anywhere, Networking. right? The, the things don't happen up here very often. Yeah. Except for here because we host it. Um, yeah. but yeah, um, I can send you the link and that would be great. It. And you know, if you can come one day, two days, um, okay. we have investor, we, a lot of things going on, industry speakers and startups. Right. Maybe that might be something that you guys might be on stage next year with us. If, yeah. You know. Um, yeah. but yeah, um, okay. I'll be great. Link for it. It's, um, be great that would be awesome so it would probably be good networking for you on the entrepreneurial side I mean like I said you never know who you're going to talk to never yep it's never know who you're going to meet it's just getting out there Mm -hmm. not play Chico so that's good yeah (laughs) (laughs) totally yeah yeah okay great thank you you're welcome well right I don't know if anybody else had questions but I think we're about ready to wrap up Let's give Danielle one more hand. What an amazing presentation. Great Q and A. Um, I'm gonna end this off real quick, and then we will be good to go. Awesome. Thank you guys for your time. I appreciate yeah, it. Thank you for yours. We really appreciate your time. It was really informative. Awesome. Second. Great service, Danielle. Thank you. It's gonna it's gonna take off. Yeah, we just gotta get the word out. Yep. And get people to realize that it is legit. <laughs> Right on. Well, thank you all of you for joining us. Again, my name is Nicholas Samper. I'm your host and organizer. I'd like to thank our chapter lead, Eva Shepard, for organizing this event for us and for hosting this event for us. I would also like to thank some of our community sponsors, Chico Start, GrowTech, Global Entrepreneur Network, Startup Grind, NorCal SBDC, and Build with Ferguson. Our, as far as events go, next week is the big one, Grow Tech Fest 2023, October 11th through 12th, all at the Sierra Nevada Big Room. Cannot wait. We've been working all year for this. Um, I'd like to thank all of you guys for coming. Um, sign up for the Chico Start newsletter um, and visit our website at chicostart.com. And lastly, I'd like to leave you all off on this quote. If we try to think of a good idea, we wouldn't have been able to think of a good idea. You just have to find the solution for a problem in your own life. That's from Brian Chesky, the co-founder of Airbnb, which is a pretty good idea for a business. Um, But that's it. We did it, folks. Lovely. Thank you.
Thank you Absolutely, guys again. Danielle. Thanks, I appreciate Danielle. it. I would also suggest signing up for One Million Cup Sacramento too. They do their own. Mm -hmm. It would be a better idea to run the circuit. They're all over the country. So great. Cool. Yeah. Thank yeah, you guys. I'm